Hi and welcome to Sea Sparkles Corner and good morning everyone in this beautiful March 2016 day. Today we're going to make something a little different. Today we're going to make a banana souffle. Mm -mm -mm. And I love it. And to start with, for measuring you need two tablespoons of butter that is melted and removed from the heat and three quarters of a cup of milk, three large bananas, and if you don't have large bananas, if you got dwarfed bananas, use five, and a tablespoon of lemon juice, butter spray, two bowls, four eggs, and you need a two and a half quart by, um, it's, I think it's four inches high, souffle container. It's this big, it's your two and a half quart souffle container, and you also need a blender. All right, so to start with, take and peel and slice your bananas into your blender. The reason you're slicing the, ban the bananas, it makes it easier for the blender to do its job. So we're going to work over here. We're going to peel and slice our blender. Remember these are large bananas. These are big bananas because there's two ciphers of bananas, dwarf and large. And don't use the plantains because you, you know you want to use bananas. So put all your bananas in your blender. Tip these come off. These are brand new bananas. I just got them yesterday. And we're putting them in our blender. And then we're going to get that one actually starts being a wee bit stubborn. <laughs> of lemon juice. All right. One tablespoon of lemon juice. Measure it, people. You don't want to eye this. Because when it comes to baking, you know, it's just how it is. Put your blender cover on. Make sure it's covered so it doesn't splatter. I'm going to give my blender a little bit of help. Did you lock it? Okay, I'm going to move the bananas around and give it a little bit of help. There we go. Put your cover on. We didn't have to Do yourself a favor, get a ninja. <laughs> we have a ninja. I meant the Ninja Blender. I can do a two by four. Okay. We got to do a little bit of work. We're getting there. Just trying to get the bananas down inside the blender. see if it's done. Uh, we still got some chunkies, chunkiness, but we're almost done here, people. We're almost done.
just check it now. Oh, it's all done. Okay. We're done with the blender. Put that down. And see, you want to make sure you keep the cover on. Splashy, splashy. All right. Now, next we're going to separate four eggs from the yolks to the whites. Now, if you're using large eggs, just do three. But for medium sized eggs, use four. If you're using small or what some people call pullet, I never do. But I have seen small eggs in the store for people who prefer smaller eggs. Use five. Adjust your recipe to the corner of the <coughs> size of your egg. Okay, that's one way of doing an egg. Here's another little trick. You can do it like this. If you want, if your hands are clean. So I'm going to show you that's two different ways of using an egg. Doing an egg. But I just kind of prefer just go back and forth till your yolks are gone and your whites are separated. That's the key. Go back and forth. Preheat your oven or rival oven or preheat your oven to 375 or your rival conventional oven but just preheat an oven to 375 while you're doing this wash your hands after I wash my hands frequently. Keep everything neat. What I do. Now you want a three quart saucepan. You can tell if it's three quart. If your pan still says three quart on the bottom, which mine does not anymore because it's so old but it works. Okay. Now one third of a cup of sugar in your three quart saucepan put the whole thing in. Okay. Ground nutmeg. I have a, a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. So in my case, you're going to take the top off. The container is too small for the half a teaspoon. Measure everything. Half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I'm going to put this away. What I do is, when I'm done with something, I usually just put it away so that way I don't get confused and I know I've needed it. Okay. your heat your burner to five or medium depending upon what you've got add three quarters of a cup of milk to it use your wire whisk and stir heat 
Heating it over medium heat, stir. All right, you wanna stir this constantly. All right, now, if you have lemons on your tree, like I don't know if I have any lemons not on it, you can lemon zest, a quarter of a teaspoon of lemon zest. I don't think I have any left on there, otherwise, <laughs> add a quarter of a teaspoon of lemon peel to give it more lemon flavor. Or, and, Put a teaspoon of lemon extra. This is a good idea. I have lemon extract here, so I'm just going to give it a. It says any left in the bottle. There, three drops of lemon extract. And that substitutes. You could have used the lemon juice. No, they didn't want to. Okay. That's because just we're trying to give the milk the lemon flavor. And you want to stir this until it thickens. Stir constantly. This is going to heat up your milk. If I didn't mention it, you also need cooler for cream. Okay, meanwhile, stir that constantly, but I'm just going to we'll step away for a minute. Well, uh, grease your container. Grease all the way up the walls. Grease it thoroughly. Okay, now we're done with this. That's about empty, too. Okay. So now this is done when it's thickened. I'll be right back. Watch the mouth. I'm getting hot. tablespoon of cornstarch. Your recipe. And then stir constantly until thickened. The cornstarch is going to help thicken it. But you want it to wait until that. Now if you don't have cornstarch, substitute flour. It does the same thing. They're both a thickening agent. But add one tablespoon. Alright. Now Stir constantly until it's thickened. On medium heat, and I'll see you as soon as that's thickened. Okay, now this bread is ready. It looks like this. It looks thick. All right, now we're just going to leave that there for a minute. The run is still going to be hot. Okay, take your fork. Take a fork and make sure egg yolks together. 
okay? Then put it into a medium sized mixing bowl. Your four yolks. You want to use a fork with this, okay? Mix until it's well mixed. Mix all your egg yolks only. Okay. Be mindful of the bowl you're using. All right, now remove this from the heat. We're done with this. Take a teaspoon, a small spoon, add just a, a tad of the hot mixture so you don't want to cook your yolks. So that's why I let them sit on the table for a while. Immediately mix with a fork. Okay, now that's done. You want to use vanilla extract, a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. We're opening a new one, people. Everybody has to open new ones when they open a new one. A teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. One half. And now one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay. We're done with the vanilla extract, so we're going to put this back away. Use your same fork in the same bowl and mix it up. Until it kind of looks like this. Now add the remainder of your hot mixture. which is your thickened, warmed milk and stuff like that. Okay, we're done with this pan. This aside. Now, mix it with your fork again. Now you saw what it looked like after each time I've done it. Now, look at that right there, and that's what it looks like when it's done. Until it's nice and good. Alright, now we're going to stir in the butter. Your two tablespoons of melted butter, and if I didn't mention it, make sure you're preheating your oven to 375, whichever one you're doing. Because we're almost ready to go into the oven. Now mix again with your fork. Now we're going to mix in the banana mixture. All at once. a single banana. This is going to give it the flavor. Okay. We're done with that. Alright, mix with your fork again. We're, make, we're building a banana souffle literally from the ground up. Building, building, building your banana souffle. Building, building, building your banana souffle. Now I'm going to use the spoon and mix it again. So we look like this. All right. Now we're done with the blender. We need our mixer now. I'm going to put this away. I'll be right back. You have your egg whites. So put them in your 
mixer all at once, okay? Now for the device, you want to use this. Because this is a wire whisk. Alright, we're going to start this off. And we're going to beat it until the egg whites are white and form soft peaked. Now if you don't have a KitchenAid, you can use a hand mixer. Ready? It's done when it looks like this. That, that definitely for, forms soft peat. Now, you have your warm mixture. That takes a while to mix so that one too. You have your warm mixture and you have your egg whites that have formed soft peat. Push all your egg whites, whites down. Now, you're going to use what's called the folding mixture. So gradually fold that into there. Use a folding mixture little by little until it's all folded into your egg whites. This is so your egg whites don't fall. Thank you. So we're going to gradually pour a little bit at a time into your egg whites using what's called a folding mixture. Make sure your oven is thoroughly preheated because gradually, a little bit at a time, until it's all mixed. Don't go too fast with this until one is done and then go to the next one. This is your banana mixture. The egg, white, the egg whites which you be is important because it's going to give the souffle the lift and we don't want to shock the egg whites for them to fall. You see it's gradually, we're gradually getting it over. My son is luckily helping me put it in there as I'm doing the folding. Don't stir, use a folding mixture. See how the folding is? Folding is you start on the bottom, go to the top. Start on the bottom, go to the top. But when you see stuff on the edge, feel free to scrape your edges. Dave is helping me. And if you see, like, we just saw a couple of banana chunks. Hey, that's okay. We're trying to make a banana souffle. until every drop, you don't want to waste a drop, not a drop, of this good stuff. As you can see how it's changing and it's all uniting together to form a good souffle. This is the point where it's either going to make your souffle or it's going to fall. So how you do this is your main thing. And whip topping for on top of your souffle. Goes great with bananas. See, this is thick enough now where I can go a little faster. And we can scrape all the rest of that into there. I want to get every drop of the ingredients. We don't want to drop, waste a single speck of the bananas. Okay. Can't scrape out a bowl with one hand. Nope. <clears throat> okay, we've got all that on there. Now that's done. I did a little bit of cleaning while we were waiting for that to mix, to wash it. Okay, I'm going to do some more folding to cover it now to make sure I get all of it on there. Make sure it's one uniform color and looks like this. Okay, now carefully pour it into your souffle plan, pan. 
Yes. Scraping, I don't want to wait to drop this good souffle because it's going to be David's and my meal. Okay, now we're going to carefully put it in the preheated oven. Now, if you use that oven, you can put it in there, but I'm going to get something to protect my hands. We're using the rival and it's preheated at 375 degrees. So I don't get burned. I'm using a protection. Now we're going to cook that for 35 minutes undisturbed. And you check it with a toothpaste and if it's done, it's done. Toothpaste? Toothpick. <laughs> I don't know. I had toothpaste on the brain. Apologies, apologies, apologies. I just bought some toothpaste this morning earlier. Um, so I'm looking at the time. It's almost quarter of nine, so it's 15, 30, 35 minutes. I will see you at 9.20, and don't go away. Make sure you preheat the oven at three, 375. That's really important when you're at this point. See you in 35 minutes. Here's our beautiful souffle, and it's all done. It looks gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. And now David and I will eat some of it. I'm going to show you how to take it out. And eat it. Okay, we want to cook it for topping. And I bought some raspberry. Just gonna get it out. Okay. Topping. Wait till you see this. Oh, it's gonna be so delicious. Some raspberry and some cool whip. Mmm. Yummy. Toozy tummy. All right, now, <laughs> need something else to get our, our souffle. Okay, mm -hmm. when you're getting out of souffle, first of all, go around your edges. Oh, see, it's not even stuck, okay? It's not even touching the edge, what are you talking about? You might just flip the whole thing over. And we're gonna take it out like this. See, look at that. Look at that. That's so pretty. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. See how beautiful that is? That's a banana souffle. And we're going to put on the side, push on the side, a nice big dollop of Cool Whip. This is what you want. And then. We're going to put some raspberries on the plate for you to enjoy. And, which is, I got the raspberries just for this. And, voila, a banana souffle. A nice light breakfast. And see, there's more. And it's hot. <laughs> It's just a little bit hot. The Cool Whip help cools it, so it makes it edible with the strawberry. So I get something of everything. Look at that. I'm feed the camera. I'm sharing with you. I'm sharing with you. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. It's delicious. I'm going to let David try it. And then I'll be back with you. I must admit, as we're in high level here, of interest in what this will taste like. I ain't never really had souffle before. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't big up that stubborn. <laughs> it's 
just hot just out of the oven. I'm gonna try just the souffle part now. So I tried all three things together. Blow on it first because it's hot. It's right out of the oven. It's delicious, isn't it? It's better with the other stuff. Yeah, because it cools it. It's so hot, fresh out of the oven. How do you like it? I'm gonna try it with just a berry. See, I'm trying to get every which way possible. <laughs> just to make you just make your viewers jealous and have to watch me eat more. <laughs> Now I want to try the uh, end piece here with just a cool whip. I recommend doing this for your for your frosting. That's that that, that, that there's very that there be that there's the best there right there. I want to take some cool whip over here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very interesting flavor. I recommend trying it. And uh, so. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Uh, as always, uh, if you like the video, click like, uh, subscribe to our channel. It helps out a lot. And comment, we do read your comments. We got more good programming coming up. Trust me on that one. So as uh, so, peace out. Thank you for watching. Give it a try. It is delicious. I absolutely love it. And. It's done when you can see it's golden brown all around. We cooked it exactly 35 minutes and it came out perfect. So we love you. Hugs and kisses from my family to yours. And as always, the fun never ends in the Sparkles Corner. We've got more exciting videos coming. Love you. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share. Feel free to subscribe. Bye, everybody.